SLURP stands for spherical linear interpolation. This method uses quaternions, has a constant angular velocity, and no singularities. So G is the quaternion, which has four parameters. Um, eta is a scalar, and then epsilon is the vector that is proportional to the angular velocity direction. Then the quaternion formula for interpolation is shown below at the bottom. So it's the initial quaternion times sine of a fraction times rho plus final quaternion times sine of a fraction times rho divided by sine of rho, where rho is the dot product of the initial and final quaternions with the arc cosine taken of it. So the way you would type that in MATLAB is shown at the bottom right, but you can also do this just with your calculator writing out things by hand. So let's go and do an example of this on the whiteboard so you can see it in practice. So we are given an example where a robot joint moves from a starting quaternion of 0.6533, negative 0 0.2706, 0 0.2706, and 0 0.6533 to an ending quaternion of 0 0.4330, negative 0.75, 0.433 and negative 0.25 over 10 seconds. Find the slurp trajectory and the quaternion at t equals five seconds. So what do these quaternions even mean? It can be really difficult to visualize these. Um, so what these would correspond to in roll, pitch, and yaw, um, the starting one, roll, pitch, and y'all this equals zero pi over four and pi over two radians um, and then the ending one corresponds to roll pitch, and y'all of pi over 3, pi, and 2, pi over 3 radians. So um, the first thing that we need to do is get our formulas and then we can calculate rho, and then we can calculate the quaternion trajectory, and then finally we'll plug in t equals five seconds to find the actual value of the quaternion. So here are the formulas, and the first thing we need to do is find the dot product of g initial and g final so that we can calculate rho. So to do the dot pl product, we basically just multiply each set of parameters together and then add them all. So if we multiply each of these, then we will get and then we need to add them all together. That comes out to be 0 0.4397. So rho equals cosine inverse of that, which comes out to be 1.1156. So that's rho. Now we can plug in rho as well as the initial and final quaternions to the G of T formula.
Okay. So this formula equals G of T. Now, that is really big and complicated, so it can be simplified. So if we go through and take that sine of 1.1156 and multiply that by each of the starting and ending quaternions, then we can simplify this to be in a little bit smaller form. So this is the answer for the G of T. You can see that it is going to come up with four different numbers or like a four by one matrix because of the four different parameters that are in a quaternion. So now in order to determine what is the quaternion at T equals five seconds, we just plug five in for T. So this would be the value of the quaternion at five seconds. Now, in order to do a reality check on this, you can square every number, add them all together and square root that, and that value should equal one. So that's called taking the norm or the magnitude of a vector. Um, so if we do that, we find that the magnitude of g of five equals one. So that gives us confidence that our answer is correct. It is at least reasonable. But now what does this actually look like? Since quaternions are difficult to visualize, let's run a MATLAB simulation and see what it comes out to. So this is the orientation of the coordinate frame. So you can see the directions that X, Y, and Z point, um, as opposed to the normal X, Y, Z coordinate frame, this is how that quaternion would have rotated the joint too. 